All right, first and foremost, all thanks and praises unto our power, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wawakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him endearing, and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Okay? A lot of people really feel like they can just do whatever they want, when they want to. They feel like when it comes to this ministry and their growth, they can do it all by themselves. They don't need a guide. They don't need a teacher. You might ask some of our people, how'd you hear about this Israelite thing? Oh, I was reading the Bible. I figured it out on my own. A bunch of lies, man. Yahweh by Shemi Shai has set it up where men would follow men because that's how the Lord wants it. Okay? It doesn't make you less than because you've learned from somebody. In fact, it's integrity. And in all reality, we all learn from other people one way or another. All right? So a lot of you Israelites on the sideline just kind of playing these games like you just figured it out on your own. You know, somehow, some way you found out you were an Israelite because some some baseball hit you in the back of the head. You, you fell into a trance. An angel approached you and said you're an Israelite and such and such. And, and you woke up out of a coma in the hospital and, and knew you were an Israelite. That's how some people act. But in reality, we're taught by men. And being taught by men. We are also. Um teaching others as well. So this is the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah, which is Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would go, that he would come up and sit with him. So Philip asked, How could I understand what I read except somebody guide me? So this is Philip being honest. This is Philip being humble. And one thing about this ministry, you have to be honest with yourself. If you don't know something, it's all right. You don't have to pretend to know something. Like, let's say you're in a camp and you get questioned and a question comes up. You don't know the answer. If you can't come up with an answer, just say you don't know. <laughs> you know, some guys, they they really have a problem just not knowing something as if it's the end of the world. OK. OK. Let's see. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So open not his mouth in his humiliation. His judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation for his life. Is taken from the earth. So this is what's being read to Philip. Okay. But at the beginning. It was asked. Do you understand what you read? And he said no. How could I understand unless I'm being guided? So just like when we do these videos. 
we read the scriptures and we break them down. We guide you. But at the same time, we we ourselves were guided. We guide one another. And let's say we we uh, break down a scripture wrongfully. OK, well, we repent. You know, we we uh, fix our error. All right. Sometimes we might slip out a certain word that wasn't supposed to come out. You know, the wrong uh, wording might have been used. You were thinking something, but it came out differently. OK, but it's all right not to know something. It's all right to just say you don't know. And all of us have been guided and taught by men. And when you first come into this truth, in fact, you have to be retaught anyway. So this is the book of Hebrews chapter five and verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. So all the men that you see on the streets teaching this truth, not just teaching, but teaching this truth. Every last one of them, every last one of us had to be retaught. All the things we learned in the world, all those lies, all those evil philosophies, all the things we thought we knew, we had to cast it to the side and relearn everything. Now, some things we may have known that was true, but most of the things that we've learned from this world, we had to throw it out. Most of the things we thought we knew about the Bible, we had to throw it out. Because this world has done a good job lying. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Just like with Philip, he had to be guided. We all have to be guided in this ministry. You don't just come into this ministry from the beginning and then figure it out on your own. And you're just the one person that the Lord was like, you know what? I'm going to make every man within Israel who comes to this knowledge learned through men, but I'm going to make you that one person who just, who, who fell into a damn deep dream. And I'm going to talk to you there and tell you that, that you're an Israelite and give you the scriptures in your sleep. That's not how the Lord wants to do it. Okay. And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So when you first come into this truth, focus on the milk scriptures, focus on the curses, Focus on repentance. You know, you don't need to focus on uh, the deep scriptures like Daniel's, you know, scriptures and revelations, scriptures in uh, second Ezra. All right. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And every last one of us comes into this truth as a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So coming into this truth, we are all taught by men. The very first scriptures you want to get into are the milk scriptures. You have a lot of men, they want to be deep from the beginning. So they want to learn, hey man, can you, can you tell me uh, what's, what's the breakdown in, in the book of uh, Revelations 18. Hey, man, what do you mean? What's the breakdown of Revelations 18? Do you even know where to show me where I could find the curses? Where can I find the curses? How, how do I um, show that I'm sincere and I want to repent? But instead, you're trying to show me well, where's NATO and EU and the scriptures at, man? You're a babe. You just came into the truth last month and you're already trying to skyrocket to the top. Most of my time in this truth, even now, I like to spend time on the basics, even to this day. Every now and again, which is hardly I might touch on the meat. But even with that, I barely touch on it. I touch on a lot of the milk. That's just what I like. I like I like building up uh, the church using the basics. You know, a lot of people forget the basics. They want to be deep all the time, but all of us have to be retired. All right. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Scriptures tell you when the Apocrypha don't seek out things too hard for you. It's only natural. It's only nature, man. We all have to learn through men. A lot of people will say, well, why do you read that Bible? It was written by man. 
<laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, how, how does that make something a lie because of the fact of it written by man? Okay. If a man says it's one plus one and that's to equal two, well, because of a man saying it, it, it can't be true. You know, it's just retarded. It's nonsense. This is Luke chapter seven and verse 18. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Yahweh Shai saying, art thou he that should come or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist had sent us unto thee saying, art thou he? that should come or look we for another. So under John the Baptist, there were two disciples. Now, when you look into it, um, one of those disciples would have been Andrew, but scholars say the other one uh, more than likely was John the Revelator. Okay, but either way it goes, two disciples that were under John the Baptist eventually came under Yahweh Shai. Two of the twelve. All right. Although they were two of the twelve. Even they were under somebody. So I don't see why it's so hard for Israelites to understand. You, you have to learn from man. You have to come under somebody. You know, Jake act like a dog that's being pulled by the ear. When it comes to being under somebody, when we all have to be taught. OK, it's not a big deal. All right. First Timothy chapter four and verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying of the hands of the presbytery. So the elders who have been laboring in this before us. OK, they have shown us the example and how to walk and men under them. Showing examples how to walk. All right. Men come into this truth as babes, as novices. Okay, if they remain, they grow, they grow, they grow. Next thing you know, um, they themselves become elders. They become presbyteries. And then it's an ongoing process. You know, men teaching men, men teaching men, men teaching men. A lot of people say you shouldn't follow men, but no, you shouldn't follow wicked men. Following man is not a wicked thing. First Corinthians four and 16. Wherefore, I beseech you be ye followers of me. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter 11 and verse one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Mashiach. So when you follow great men, when you follow men who serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you're just following Yahweh Shai. But too many people are full of so much pride, so much arrogancy. They don't have the ability to just admit like, yeah, I was taught by somebody. Because maybe that's somebody you was taught by. Maybe you don't like them no more. Maybe there was a falling out. OK. I didn't learn this truth on my own. I learned it on the Internet, randomly typing in stuff like Jesus is black on YouTube. Because I always felt in my spirit that Jesus was black. You couldn't tell me different back in the world. But I was ignorant to a lot. I didn't know any scriptures. I was ignorant to a lot of things. I had a zeal according to the scriptures, but it wasn't in righteousness. But because I've followed great men who have been laboring before me, okay, they helped me find my way. They helped me find who I am within this ministry find who I am as a person. Okay. When I was back in the world, I thought I knew who I was, but I still was questioning it. I didn't realize who I was until I, I came into this truth. Okay. Nothing else has made more sense. Okay. Now seeing that all of us are taught by men, we all come under somebody. You also have to understand that on your own time, and I've done a lesson on it, you have to read and study and do things on your own, too, because the men over you, they might not always give you the best advice. 
they may not always be in the spirit. They may not always say the best things or carry themselves in the best manner. Uh, Job 32 and verse 9. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. So there's times that even men who are elders may do something that's a little questionable or silly, unethical, whatever the case may be. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not men of the Lord, but we are in this flesh. We all have our shortcomings, but that does not take away. We have men in this truth who were taught by other men, who were taught by other men, who were taught by other men. No one should ever say, hey, man, yeah, I just woke up one day and I had the truth or I went on a long journey and I came across some angel in the middle of nowhere. And he, he gave me the truth. Now, Yahweh Bashemi Yahushua can do that. He can do that. Overall, that's not what he's doing with us right now. Okay? The, the torch is being passed around through this word going out through men. Okay? And seeing that great men are not always wise, that's why it's also important that although we learn from each other, that we dig into the scriptures ourselves. We find that time on our own to reassure what we're being taught. If you feel like something is questionable that I'm saying or what a brother is saying, that's the importance of reading. But at the same time, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can read, you can study, you can do whatever you want. It's not going to make a difference. You still need a guide. Okay. When you first come in, you, you definitely need someone to show you and guide you. You shouldn't have that spirit of, yeah, I can figure it out. Yeah, I know I'm an Israelite. Yeah, I got this. The Lord ain't dealing with that kind of spirit. All right, so I'm going ahead and wrap it up there and give all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakwadash. Shalom.